Welcome back, folks. Triple Crown coming to you Sunday evening uh, from Vancouver, British Columbia. The topic, continuation of the Global War 1939. Uh, this episode, we'll be discussing the Vichy uh, French rules. Now, when I first played this game with Hilltop and he interest, introduced me to it and the idea of rolling for ships, rolling for territories, I mean, I was already very keen to play the game and knew I was going to like the game just based on the fact there was tiger tanks and other stuff. But when I saw this uh, occur the first time in person, it blew my mind, like mind blown. Uh, absolutely loved it. Um, there's been a few changes. We've, we're doing uh, uh, not, nothing major. So we're going to assume for the purpose of this video that, that Reims has fallen and Paris has fallen. So the difference in the setup, this is the, original, the opening setup for the French. Uh, difference are we've added uh, one infantry to Saigon and one infantry to French Indo. Uh, I think we've added a guy to Syria. I can't remember if there was there was a guy here before. Uh, Northern Africa, everything's the same with the French Foreign Legion. And we've added, uh, I think, a naval base to, to Bordeaux and an air base to Normandy. So those are, those are the differences. Otherwise, everything's the same. There's only the free French uh, units that are starting the game uh, that are on. There's no, obviously, free French yet. Um, but before we get into it, um, before you do this, you're going to want to be able to identify the territories, uh, and you can do this by the Free French, uh, or sorry, Vichy, these are the Vichy roundels, and Free French roundels, you can get these from HPG. And also, there is a, a set you can buy, that's the, uh, the Vichy set, the lighter blue, that's what I use, it it's, it's absolutely works perfectly, uh, you don't have to think about all the units they have, they come as a, as a whole package. So we're going to assume, that in this game now, there's a couple of changes that the Vichy rule now, setting up the Vichy government is automatic. And it only occurs when Germany captures Paris, okay? Now the term that it captures Paris, you don't roll for the ships first and they move and they're defending uh, other ships in other territories. For example, if that, if that same turn Let's just say, I'm just gonna put this out here. Let's just say Germany was, um, you know, was, was de declaring also battle on, the, on this uh, UK uh, cruiser. Now, this battle occurs before the boats are rolled for. So on the same turn, for example, um, if UK happens to roll for this entire Navy, this Navy doesn't go join in the defense. Um, so the ships move at the end of the turn. So I just wanted to clarify that. Um, and the fact that now there's a scorched earth, uh, this territory in Normandy, um, you know, whether the Germans, they should have the units to go in and take it if they want to. Sometimes they don't want to, they want to make sure they capture Paris. So they don't want to, um, they leave this. And if this is a free, if, if they, does it roll Vichy and it remains free French, they have the option of scorched earth of scorching these facilities, which they, the Germans might want. So... Uh, crucial in that standpoint. So what happens when Paris falls? Well, uh, the 15 IPC that the French start with, I think it's a little bit more than the original, uh, goes to Germany. So the, 10, the 15 IPC goes, and the major factory in Paris goes to a minor. So that happens right off the bat. The next thing that happens is you roll for all of the land territories first. And why do you roll for the land territories? And that is because you want to know where the ships go. Sometimes the ships join your navy, sometimes they go to a port. Well, um, they can't go to a port if then the port then converts um, to, your, to your enemy. So we're going to, um, and it doesn't matter what area you start in. Kurt and myself, uh, we always started uh, at the top and kind of worked our way clockwise down. I guess anti-clockwise. So we're going to start with Normandy. I'm going to try and... Uh, Keep the dice there so you can see. So that is a two. So that, if it was, if it rolls a one to a six, it's Vichy. If it rolls a seven to a 12, it's a free French. So good for the Germans. They're able to keep those ports and use them. 
and let's do Bordeaux. And that is a, oh, wait a minute. I need to use a D12 for this. So I'm gonna start over, I already, I already messed up. So we're gonna start over. So this is how it works, folks. We're gonna roll for Normandy, and that is a five. So it remains Vichy. Now we're going to roll for Bordeaux. It is a six, so it will also go Vichy. Germans are lucky here. An eight. So Marseille goes free French. Now that just to be clear, just to be clear, the Germans cannot build a factory here in the game. So this does not matter. So even if they were to liberate this territory later on, even though it's worth three, they cannot build a minor factory there. So the Germans in this game do not have the option of building a minor factory in the Mediterranean. Okay, let's do Corsica. Now Kurt loves Corsica because he likes to you know, air blitz the Italian Navy and land in Corsica. So this is another territory. And now that also goes free French. So the Italian Navy is gonna to have to be careful. We're gonna go a little bit south here. Let's do Tunisia at 12. Now, this, these territories are also critical because there's a whole bunch of guys here, right? These guys can move on the, the next turn. So that's a two. So previously, just to clarify, these guys might be able to move to a territory adjacent. They, we are now saying they are frozen. If it goes Vichy, these guys are absolutely frozen. They cannot move. Uh, three, so these guys go Vichy as well. Let's do Algeria, 12, so that goes free French. Now why we decided to do it this way, well, sometimes you can, which territory do you roll first? If the guys are able to move, we just said, you know what, let's, this historically, this is more accurate. Western Algeria, that's a four, that's free French. Rio de Oro, that is free French. French Equatorial Africa, let's move this down. That's a five, so that is Vichy. There's a three for Congo, that is Vichy. And that is a nine, so that is free French. Now another territory that Kurt loves to attack is Madagascar. <laughs> well, he loves, he loves it for his bombers to land when, it, when it's Vichy. So that is a 10, so that is free French. So Kurt will not be able to air blitz my navy somewhere and land all of his bombers there, which he loves to do. Syria, let's roll for Syria. That is a six, so that is also Vichy. And let's roll for French Indo. Whoops, sorry folks. You can see this takes a, takes a little bit of time, but uh, you know, part of, the, part of it I really enjoy. Now we decided to put infantry there because there was a battle, a war going on between uh, the, the Siamese and the Vietnamese. So six, that also goes Vichy. Now let's not forget about uh, these two islands down here. Sorry, Fiji and we can't even say that. Anyways, we'll roll for Fiji first. Oh man, the Vichy are having a, having a field day. Okay, and let's roll for the other island. And that is a three, so that will go free France. Now you could, if you really wanted to, to it didn't matter to you, you could roll both islands and either go Vichy or free French to save it, but it doesn't really matter. So now, all the territories that went Vichy, uh, this one we're gonna swap out three infantry. So I'm just gonna do this really quickly, as quickly as I can. So that wasn't, uh, that wasn't too painful. Now, now the part that can either be amazing or it can hurt. Uh, and this is where the game can be quite a bit different if the boats go one way or another. Uh, now, just to give you folks a, um, on the back of the German setup card as we have it now, this is a, giving you guys a little bit insider. This is the setup chart on the, if you flip it over, it tells you all the cool stuff you need to know about the Germans. 
And one to two, rolling for ships becomes German. Three to eight gets scuttled. Nine to 10 is Vichy. And 11 to 12 becomes free French. Okay, so let's roll for the battleship. Now that is a one. Oh, that is amazing for the Germans. Now, just to, uh, I'm going to swap it out with German, German boat now. So let's do the cruiser next. And that is a one. Oh my goodness. The Germans, uh, this might be a, a strongly, heavily favored German game. So that, and I can roll the two destroyers. We can roll both at the same time. A three, so one is scuttled. And the 11 becomes free French. So it remains. It's gonna keep it a free, as a free French. So one is scuttled. And the submarine scuttled. That's usually what seems to happen mostly is mostly gets scuttled and a three. So scuttled for the transport. Now let's move to this Navy here. Now this Navy is critical because the Germans cannot build here. So if they get a transport and a couple guys, um, that is, that, that's gonna severely change what happens in the Mediterranean in this game. So let's roll for the two cruisers first. There's two cruisers, two destroyers, and a um, transport. So we'll roll for the two cruisers. A five and a four, so they're scuttled. See, folks? We called it. Most ships, now two destroyers. 12 and a one. Oh, so one goes German, one remains free French. So we're going to put a German destroyer there. Now what the Germans really want is that sub is that transport. And that is a eight. So that is scuttled. That is good for the Allies. Now the two submarines here. Uh, let's roll one in C zone 45. And that is a two. So that goes German. And let's roll for the other submarine. And that is a two as well. Wow. The Germans have a little bit of a navy going on in the Mediterranean. Okay, so now, so that's all complete. Now um, we're going to say at the end of this turn, these ships have to move. So this, sh this ship here, the C zone 37 uh, can remain. This one actually, no, it has, it's got to move as well. So the, the free French ships got to move to C zone 45. And this destroyer and this submarine can all come here in the C zone. Okay, because this is a Vichy territory, you can move. This is a free French territory, so it's got to move there. Okay. Now this is a Vichy territory, so wherever the closest German navy is or uh, German port, we're going to say they're going to move to Western Germany. This happens at the end of the turn, and let's just say this territory is still London. So if there's no uh, navy there, uh, meaning uh, you know German ships, actually no, they could remain there. They could remain there, and this will say this guy's got to move here. So this is situational dep dependent. It does clarify in the rules um, in each scenario, and I I don't I have it in front of me, but I'm not going to go in, in every single scenario because often they're they're different. Every game's different. There could be a you know. Uh, Whatever, whatever's happening up here, there could be a UK fleet here, which it's your option. So the French, this French guy here, he might have an option to join the UK Navy up here, or he could go to this port here. It would be up to the, uh, the allied player to decide. So now um, let's just say at the end of the turn, Germany collects money for all of these uh, Vichy territories. So this one here is a one, this one here is a one. That one there is a one. Normandy and Bordeaux, I, I, I believe, are also, also a one. And all of the free French territories, um, the UK collects money for. So the free French units move on the UK turn. The Vichy units are all frozen. 
So the light blue guys, the light blue navy for the rest of the game is frozen. They cannot move. So let's get into another scenario that I wanted to clarify. Let's pretend that Bordeaux up here was Vichy, okay? And there was a guy there. And there was a Vichy boat there, okay? When America wants to come across and attack Bordeaux, they have to clear this sea zone first, okay? They can't just come in and ignore that ship. Now, what would happen if they were up in here in Normandy and came down and walked in without a transport, then they can ignore the ship. But if they're going to do an amphibious attack, um, they have to take that, um, uh, treat it as it's defending. Now, what else can happen in the Vichy territories? Well, the German units or Axis units can come in as, as, as they choose. They can build an air base there. They can build a naval base. They can build a fortification. Uh, they, can, they can come in and leave as they, as they want. Uh, they cannot attack it. Now, uh, over here in the Pacific, just to clarify, the money for these territories and the Pacific side goes to the Japanese. And the, uh, if this was to go free French, the money still goes to the UK. So that's, that's the difference there. Uh, the money here goes to the Japanese. Now, in conclusion uh, of the French, now what happens later in the game? Oh, actually, so hold on. So that, let's just say these, these free French guys come over here and they capture Tripoli, which, you know, that's probably what they're going to do on their next turn. They put a free French roundel on it and the money goes towards the UK. Now, let's say Paris is liberated. So these are American friends over here. They came across in a transport. They liberated Paris. We're saying for the first, only once only in the game when the first time Paris is liberated, that this minor, minor factory remains a minor factory and four French infantry are placed in Paris. And all of the Vichy territories, wherever they are, immediately convert back to free French. So all of these guys, their allegiance switches and they become free French. So even though they've been sitting there the whole game and couldn't do anything, now all of a sudden they're active. And that could, that could benefit the allies later in the game. And also the same thing with all of the, uh, the Vichy boats. They all become free French again. So that is the Vichy free French uh, kind of summed up. Um, hope it makes sense. It will all be um, specified in the rules. And just to clarify, uh, just go over, this is the, uh, currently the draft uh, French setup chart, as you guys can see. And you flip it over and it will tell you um, all the all these sort of cheats that you need to know. The, so these are not finalized, these are in still draft, draft stage, but that's kind of the idea we, we are going with. So we'll wrap it up here. And what we're gonna talk about here is Something I learned uh, is that a study they did with people that play competitive chess is that co playing competitive chess for hours and hours on end is the same mental and physical, um, you know, on your body as running a marathon. So these board games we play, playing Global War 39, if you're playing a board game for all day, you are spent. You are spent the same as if you were running a marathon. So how do you prepare if you're running for a marathon? How do you prepare if you're playing these, these board games? Well, a lot of it starts before you're even there in the day of. You have to be hydrated before you go in. You know, you have to have good sleep before, before the night of a game. And, and during the game, you need to fuel your body. You need to fuel your body with water. You need to fuel your body with food, which is very easy when you're playing uh, a, game, a game of 39 to remember to take a break and eat. Um, bananas are a good thing, a, a nice quick snack, nuts. Um, but also giving yourself a brain break when you're playing. You can't just go for 12 hours straight and, and not have a break. And I can tell you that I, what I've learned about myself is that when I get to that point where I'm, physic, where I'm mentally foggy and starting to, 
become forgetful, that it can take you an hour to do a task that could normally take you two minutes. But if you give yourself a five minute break, um, it kind of resets yourself and you can go back and be, you know, as sharp as you were to start the day. And so during the game, you need to take small little micro breaks, go outside, go for a walk, get some fresh air, coordinate this with your teammates so that, you know, they got your back and they're watching the table while you're away if there's something you don't want to miss. But you need to be taking a break about every hour, hour and a half, whether that's a, a drink of water, a quick walk, something, get some fresh air, um, take your mind away from the game and go back. But hydration and mental preparation are key. So thanks for watching folks and stay tuned.